I just made this mistake with functions and map in Julia, and I'm here to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes. So what I'm gonna do in this video is take you through how I uh, define a function in Julia using the Jupyter Notebooks, and then uh, how to use map on that function, though uh, I'll show you how not to make the same mistake I did in, in terms of using a range of numbers. So the first thing we'll do is that ultimately I wanna put a plot together out of this. Uh, so we're going to import the plots package uh, this will take a second. Then we're going to define our function. Uh, then we're going to put together, uh, use the map in Julia, the map function, to apply a range of, of I should say an array, not a range, or a collection, uh, to that function to get an array back as a result. And then we're gonna plot that array. I was thinking about Euler's formula earlier, so that's the one we're gonna put in. So to call a function, to, uh, write your own function in Julia, simply type the word function, then the name of the function, we're gonna call it Euler, uh, and list any arguments you'd like, and then press enter. So Jupyter will automatically put in the correct indent. Indent is important in Julia like in Python. Uh, there's no uh, line character or curly brace like in some other languages. So then we say what we're going to return, which is the log of, uh, so I've got my notes on the other screen, the log of that plus the imaginary unit times sign there divided by the imaginary unit. So I did another video, you can see in the link below about uh, complex numbers in Julia. To refer to I, the complex uh, unit, uh, simply use im im. Uh, so that's what we're going to return for our function and then functions need to finish with end. That's it. Okay, so we can run our using plots. We can run our, uh, as you can see, when this little dot is filled here, it means that Julia is evaluating the notebook. Uh, it looks like plots are still evaluating. It does take a while to start up Julia sometimes when you need to import the package. It, it pre-compiles the package so that it's fast when it's called. But it is a bit slow to get things going. So we'll keep writing out our notebook while we're doing that. So after uh, the, after we write the function, what we want to do is write our map so that we can map uh, the function to our arguments. So we do that by saying map is uh, x such that call Euler on x, where x is, now here's the mistake I made. Originally, I put in, I wanted to do zero point, uh, oh, how should we do this? I want to do zero to say pi, uh, zero in steps of pi on 100, uh, to 2 pi. However, uh, you'll see in a second once this is ready to go that this doesn't evaluate. So we'll run, uh, run our Euler function first. So when you define a function in Jupyter, it's important to run it in order. So this function hasn't executed yet, which means that uh, if I were to call this map function straight away, I'll show you, uh, Julia won't know which function to use. So I call map and Julia has no clue where Euler is because I haven't defined this yet. Though that, that said, there might be a built-in Euler function. Uh, yeah, so uh, Euler not defined because I haven't run this one yet in Jupyter. So I run the function first to, I guess it registers the function is a good way to explain it. Uh, and says that it's a function with one method. Uh, and then I run our map and it should come back with an error saying that uh, cosine can't handle this, yep. Because the mistake I made here and the mistake that I'm hoping you won't make when you try this out is that I've just put in this uh, step range as an argument. So what is happening here is that map is trying to call Euler on one argument. This whole thing is represented here as one argument. So it's sending the whole range to the function that I've defined, which I didn't define on a range, I just defined it on one value, uh, and that's causing the problem. So I'll, I'll put in, go take a step back for a second, and let's call our Euler function on one number and see what happens. So you should be able to see that it comes back, one complex number comes back. Actually, if we divide by pi, it might give you a bit of, one complex number comes back, which is uh, this number here. Uh, and 
so what, what map tries to do is replace this let's get rid of that one to reduce confusion so what map tries to do is replace this uh, argument to Euler with all the other arguments that you give to x so replace the argument to your function with all the other arguments that you give to map so in this case uh, map doesn't expand our uh, range it simply passes the whole range to the function which which isn't what we want so instead uh, use the Julia built-in function uh, collect which actually I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of collect here so collect uh, if we give it the same range so pi on 100 to 2 pi Oops. and then hit run oh. uh, and you can see I made a typo here so it's this run and our collection should pop up okay so we've got a 200 element array from 0 to pi on one zero to two pi in pi on a hundred steps I, I simply picked a hundred to give a, a resolution to the graph that we're going to produce in a minute so let's come back here and rerun our uh, map function so we use a collection of zero to uh, pi divided by a hundred to two pi and then we hit run and that should give us our so this has evaluated our Euler function on all 200 elements of the collection. Uh, and now if we, this is saved as the answer. So uh, Julia saves the last result of a evaluation in a special variable a and s. So if we do plot a and s, answer, uh, it should give us the plot that we're looking for. Uh, and uh, plotting the Euler function over this range in two dimensions it's just going to be a two-dimensional plot of uh, real versus imaginary it isn't very informative but I thought it might be a nice output to see how we can define our own function map something over that function uh, and then plot the results of that map and uh, I just picked the Euler function because I was thinking about it earlier today I have found that sometimes Julia is a bit slow in putting uh, in running things when you do it for the first time uh, from a bit of reading I did online recently it seems to be uh, the second time you run things it's much faster and I'll, I'll show you that in a second if you like so I haven't cut the video for this plotting but you can see here it's done the plotting of uh, real versus imaginary I, I didn't find out what this no strict ticks found mean I think it's something to do with the way plotting is done uh, but it seems to plot the graph okay if you're interested in a more visual example, a more production ready example of how to get plots out of Julia, check out the link in the description below where I, I've made a video recently about how to uh, use Jupyter for plotting. Uh, and I did another one where we used Julia to prepare publication ready plots uh, in the usual 300 DPI or high DPI required by journals. So feel free to check that one out as well. Uh, so in this one, I'll, I'll show you just quickly what I mean by it gets quicker so let's change this to 4 pi and we run again to generate our answer and then we run our plots on our answer and it's much quicker to come up there so uh, that's a brief overview of how to set up a function in Julia using this function return and end pattern uh, how to then map ver values over that function and how to avoid the mistake I made of trying to pass a step range to a function use the built-in collect instead if you've got any questions on this uh, feel free to leave a comment below I'm planning an upcoming video on, on this this took me quite a while to learn which mistake I'd made here so I thought it's probably about time I looked into some of the resources available to learn Julia so I'm planning an upcoming video soon on uh, the different resources available to learn Julia for free so hit the subscribe button if you're interested in finding out more about how to learn Julia for free and that video should be coming out shortly. I'll see you then.